Sinai Bridge would be like without a bridge? Well, 200 years ago, that was the case. On this day in 1819, the first stone, just in that tower over there, was laid, the start of the building of this magnificent structure behind me. And today, we're gonna to go and explore all of the exciting activities in celebration of that moment. the anniversary, the Menno Heritage Museum is holding a history fair. What do you know about the history of what, what we're celebrating today? Well, it is basically the 200th anniversary today of laying the first stone of the Menai Suspension Bridge. They had been planning to build a bridge across the strait for several decades before this, in 1819 when it was first started. But uh, they eventually got all the funding, got everything through Parliament and all that. And then after a lot of planning, designing and all that on that day, to three cheers, they laid the first stone on what was going to be one of the big towers of the, uh, of the bridge. And so they started on 1819, they worked on it. It was finally opened in 1826, so it took quite a long time. Well, before the bridge was here, there were just a couple little houses, a couple little cottages. There was the Cambria Inn, which was the ferry house at the time that you know, supplied people, you know, coming across the, the uh, strait on the ferry. And other than that, there was nothing here. So, but after the bridge first opened, the town started expanding fairly rapidly to what we have today, where we've got a big high street, a lot of uh, shops and hardware stores and green grocers and butchers, as they would have been back in those days. So it became a really thriving town after the, uh, after the bridge was opened. So what did local people on Anglesey think about the coming changes? How did they think the bridge would affect their lives? Bridges are an incredibly important about communications. They bring um, communities together, they enable uh, trade, but I mean the, the story of the Menai Suspension Bridge starts way back with the, the Act of Union. It was a very unsettling time back then, with the Act of Union in 1801, when Ireland was joined to become a part of the United Kingdom of Great Britain. The 10th of August, 1819. We would like to welcome you to our ceremony of opening the bridge by the laying of the foundation stone. The joining of Great Britain with the country of Ireland to create the United Kingdom has resulted in the urgent need for a new means of crossing the strait and speeding our passage to Dublin, and thus to our new bridge and our project engineer, Mr. Thomas Telford. So this gentleman called Thomas Telford is going to be putting a new bridge on the strait. Finally, some new business. Oh, what's wrong with the business you've got? Nice and quiet here. Uh, the way I like it. Everything's working perfectly at the moment, and it's just going to bring more people here. It's going to sort of um, spoil the area. It's, it's going to, I'm going to be out of a job, really. Henry Grattan is the MP that I work for, and um, he has to make the journey quite regularly, so he will be very pleased when the uh, bridge is built. Well, I, I would like some food, but to tell you the truth, I'm just so glad to put my feet on firm ground. What a crossing it was on the ferry. Oh, I thought we were all going to end up in the water. So the whole link from Dublin through to London will be so much easier and something that hasn't been there before because the ferry is a difficult crossing. We've come all the way from London, but it's, it's just taken so long. Well, yes, the tide does slow things down, doesn't it? Oh, I think it's an amazing opportunity, uh, a great thing to happen for the future. You see, we can start trading over in Carnarvon and... Um, the only thing we're worried about is that there, there may be a toll and we have to think about that as far as profits are concerned, you know, whether it's going to be worth our while crossing over the bridge uh, if there's a toll. But, uh, you know, we're hopeful the ferries might still be running, so we'll, we'll have to worry about that when the bridge is built. Oh, but I don't know what it's going to be like, you know, this hanging bridge they're planning here. 
My husband was working over there on the Paget column. He fell, hurt his leg, and now he can't get a job here. Oh. I don't know what to do. Oh, dear, that must be very hard for you. Yes. I don't know what it's going to be like. I, I, I'm, I, they, they're, building, they're making a mess down there, building this bridge, and there's, there's stones everywhere. I, I can't get my cockles, my mussels, and oysters. They can't, I can't get anything. It's a, right, it's a real mess down there. It's okay now where the bridge is being built, but um, once the bridge is gone, uh, built, then they'll be passing you by, you know, on their way to Ireland. Of course they won't. Best ale in town, straight side. That's the fashion in England, you see. Rich English travellers coming to spend money to visit. There's just people been flocking here, absolutely flocking here. Pockets laden with coins, but people with ideas as well, people with businesses, people with hopes and dreams of developing this place. Now I've heard some people say, oh, I don't want to see this around here. But I'm telling you now, this is great for the area. I mean, new ideas, new money, and most of all, chances for people to settle and start businesses and families here. Yes, indeed. A bridge to the future. A bridge to the future. A bridge to the unknown. Oh, you <laughs> So ladies and gentlemen, a bridge to the future. Hip hip. Telford had to draw on all his skills and experience to find a solution to build a bridge across the treacherous Menai Strait. So he chose the narrowest point. But his first design of a traditional arched bridge was rejected by the Admiralty. It was not high enough. They needed a hundred foot clearance from high tide to allow the high masted sailing ships to pass beneath. Telford and his team of engineers came up with a revolutionary design, a suspension bridge. When it opened in 1826, Menai Bridge was the longest suspension bridge in the world. design has inspired many engineers. One of these is Bob Damon, Telford's biggest fan. Good evening everyone and a very warm welcome to you all here this evening. In 2007 we purchased this building and a perfect duo started to work to develop the exhibits and interpretation and make the place fit for purpose. I'm talking about Bob and Nick Holyfield. But the Trust's desire this evening is for us to salute and thank Mr. Telford Mark II, as I call him, <laughs> Bob. <laughs> that is to launch the matter waited for publication, the Menai Suspension Bridge, the first 200 years, written of course by Bob. I started this book just over a year ago. Uh, originally, some time ago, we discussed doing a book about the two bridges to tell the story of both bridges. Um, and I, as I've said to some people tonight, there are loads of books around that have loads of mistakes in them and errors of fact, and it just annoys me. Uh, so I thought I'd write a book that gets everything right. <laughs> so someone's bound to email me in a few days saying, you know. wrong. Anyway, so that's the book. Right. 
here we've got Jenny Porter, who's been instrumental with organising this day and celebrating the history of Menai Bridge. Hi Jenny, how are you feeling today? It's an exciting day. It's fantastic. It's really good that everybody's turned up to sit, to find out what's going on in the history fair. Yeah. And how are you feeling about today? It's a momentous day celebrating. It is. Yesterday was Thomas Telford's birthday. Oh. Look who it is. Thomas Telford. Happy birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, Mr. Talbot. But today is the 200 years to the exact day of when the first stone was laid to build, to start to build the Menai Bridge. What sort of things have we got going on today? Well, we've got the place is full of experts who know everything about what what was happening around 1819. So we found something quite interesting going on here, and Dylan is going to tell us all about it. Hi, Dylan. What are you up to here? This is how things would have been done before the age of computers. Uh, I'm at the moment tracing an original drawing that's been prepared previously. Um, and technique is more or less similar to what Telford would have done back in the day. So is this what Thomas Telford would have done when he was designing the bridge? Uh, yes, quite possibly. Nothing much has changed. Some of the materials have changed slightly. Thomas Telford wouldn't have used these pens. These came in in about the 1960s. Telford would have used something similar to the reach over. Something similar to these ruling pens, which he would have filled with a drop of ink from a bottle. Um, he'd have had to test the line weights that he wanted, the thickness, first by adjusting the screw. And if he had to do a dry, or draw anything in freehand, he'd have had to use a mapping pen and literally like sketch it out in freehand. We now have computers to do things like this. Yes. How do you learn to do something so technical? Because I kind of feel like I'm sitting with Tony Hart, but a scientific version <laughs> of. So you tell me a little okay. bit about how, how many hours would go into designing something like the Menai Bridge today if you were doing, using the same techniques? Oh my God. Years, I suppose. Wow. And how many of these would you need to be able to design a full bridge? Yeah, hundreds. Hundreds? Well, you'd have, to, you'd have to detail that. So that's a component. So you'd have to detail all the components there. Components, uh. You'd have to draw all the assemblies there. Uh, and you'd have to draw all the locations there. Uh. Wow, so an awful lot of work. Yeah. So this is, a, this is a song called The Mother of Wales. Southeast lie the mountains that roll down to the straits, where the green glassy waters flow northeast and southwest, as if she were breathing, tis here lie the graves. Of the ships that went down off the mother of waves. Why do you think an event like this is so important? Uh, it's just commemorating it because we have fundraisers to keep the bridge up to date. So you don't want to have it where it's just starting to crumble and then it'll have to be torn down. It's just, it's one of the iconic places in Britain. You know, it's just, the Menai Strait is one of the most beautiful places in the world and uh, the bridge is, is kind of the jewel in, in the crown of it really. So to, 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 to commemorate it and to, to, to be part of this today is, is very important that we, that we came. It's just, uh, long, you know, long may it last another two, a thousand years or whatever. The land of my fathers, the mother of Wales. The land of my fathers, the mother of Wales. We've seen how much planning went into a bridge like the Menai Bridge. What about actually building it physically before there are even machines to do something like that? Well, I braved the wind to come outside and see a demonstration of just one of the many things that would have been used to help build this bridge. What on earth have we got here? Please tell me all about well, this it. This is just a tripod arrangement for lifting bits of... I've, got, I've only got a bit of, of wood, not a piece of stone. Because in those days, when the bridge was built, no electricity, steam power, no, you didn't have steam power for lifting things, so it was all just lots of muscle power. And this made life a lot easier. But just doing something like that. 
Do you want to have a go? I would love to. Can I do it one handed? <laughs> yes, yes. Excellent. Okay, let's give it a go. Well, so it's just pull. pull. Oh, that is easier than it looks. It is, yes. <laughs> Makes life easy for you. This tripod's a little bit like a crane arrangement, but we've got this trolley here too. What, what was that for? That cat that traditionally carries stuff around the quarries and the uh, stone quarries or slate quarries. So they were pushing trolleys like this yeah, around with yeah. the stone inside? Yeah, the stone's in it, yeah. And you've built this for this demonstration here. Yeah, what went into building it? <laughs> a lot of scrap wood <laughs> <laughs> and four wheel barrow wheels. <laughs> Well, it really brings it to life what a building site would have been like 200 years ago and brings to life the people behind building the bridge, not just as we see it today. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Telford looked locally for the right stone to build the towers. The limestone was found in Penmon quarries and brought around by boat, despite the severity of the weather and the tides. centuries later, to the day, we are here to unveil a plaque to commemorate the laying of the first of these stones. And also, to add to the drama, we get some traditional Welsh weather, a Tywydd Cymraeg. Just in time for the big reveal by our very own Thomas Telford. is mounted on a block of limestone. What an exciting day full of activity. But this is just the beginning. This was just the first laying of the stone. Seven more years went past before the bridge actually opened. So who knows, in seven years time, we might be back here celebrating the opening of the Manning Bridge too. <laughs> <laughs>